So today I thought I'd do something a little different and bring you guys 5 weapons that went from being what people would consider OP to absolute trash. How's it going guys my name is DPJ and today I'll bring you another BR3 video. If you do enjoy it leaving a like really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. Also before we go any further for all your gaming needs no matter the platform we play it on at amazing prices and incredible weekly deals check out G2A linked within the video description. So today guys we take a look or a look back at 5 weapons that were at one time so so good Gearbox took it upon themselves to nerf them somewhat into the ground and for the most part most of these weapons have been forgotten about never recovered and never used again. Now after going through this list, if you guys remember a weapon I don't mention, be sure to let me know down below in that comments section. Okay, so let's get into the 5 people, well, actually it's 5 plus, but yeah, let's get into it people. And in at number 5, we have the King and Queen's Cool. The legendary pistols which saw them go from incredible weapons to the weapons they are currently at the moment of being just meh. Now originally the cool Jacobs pistols, which drop exclusively from Tyrion the Destroyer, the main villain from the original BR3 story, these in the early days were the gold 2 weapons for many, and they both packed an almighty punch. The difference between the two I believe, one being a king's cool drops off in incendiary and shock, while the other queen's cool drops off in corrosive radiation and trial. Don't quote me on that, I ain't used these things in quite some time and I could be mistaken there. So these two pistols were at one stage the very best in the game and we saw many many great builds created where these two pistols were the main things to use. I clearly remember a certain flak build and remember seeing it absolutely mount grave or like nothing I can remember. And that's the thing, I actually believe this is the reason these two pistols received a nerf. Because if I'm honest I don't think they were ever overpowered at all. Certain builds in this game could make any weapon seem overpowered and I feel many amazing builds would take advantage of these pistols and the benefits they had and it's this which inevitably saw the two receive a nerf. So the king and queen's cool, how did Gearbox nerf them? Well, they dropped the fire rate on them by 50% which when you think about how these weapons worked you would have known straight away how much of an effect this would have on the weapons. But within the same patch, the same patch notes dropped by Gearbox we saw Jacob's pistols across the board receive a 15% damage reduction nerf too and this pair of nerfs in my opinion hit these pistols quite hard. Now I know there's still people still out there who still use these weapons to good effect which is great to see but in my opinion they won't ever be the weapons they once were. Ok so moving on and in at number 4 we have nothing other than the iron cannon. So the Iron Cannon was first introduced with a Moxie's Heist of the Handsome Jackpot and is an exclusive drop from the Fabricator Mark II. So when this weapon actually first arrived, many people including myself thought because of the flavour text on it and just in general how powerful it was, Gearbox purposely put this back into the game as a joke to all the nerfs weapons in game received. So they added this back into the game due to this and wanted to add back a weapon that seemed OP. And to be honest that's exactly what this was, as you can see on the screen now, this is pre nerf by the way, this thing was incredible, it was stupid powerful, and it was a guaranteed drop every time you killed the fabricator. The iron cannon quickly became a weapon everyone was using and just tearing everything apart with it. Now the purpose of this being added back into the game by Gearbox for the fun of having something strong in the game in my opinion still stands and I truly believe what they did was on purpose and what they already had adding this into the game was the intentions to eventually nerf it and that's what eventually happened. So what Gearbox did was they made the iron cannon upon every shot consume at least 6 ammo per shot but at the same time adding a 5 second reload time. And what these changes actually did was drastically drop the weapon's DPS stat values to a point of people just not using it anymore. I mean looking at it today it's still powerful but to use this over what else is on offer would be just daft. And all of this has led in my opinion to the iron cannon being a meh weapon right now. One that does deal great damage but at the same time trying to do it efficiently while playing the many aspects this game has in reality is very very poor. Ok so moving on and in at number 3 we have a pair of grenades, two different families, both equally ruined. 
So the two families of grenades nerfed by Gearbox were the Firestorm and the Hex variants. Now the nerfs which come upon these two grenades were again around the time we started seeing some popular grenade builds being created. Now I will admit, the very first grenade we did see, which was nerfed out of existence was, and rightfully so, the pipe bomb. This if you do remember was a blue variant which was utterly broken. These kind of items I have tried keeping out of this list and let's face it the pipe bomb 100% needed toning down. It was just crazily overpowered. But the firestorm and the hex grenades in my opinion I don't think they were. I thought the way in which they were nerfed and the effect that has had on these grenades and the game going forward is still scarring the game right now. Because if you think about it there really isn't many efficient popular grenade builds which are still running to this day, which are 100% based upon those grenades and using them to push throughout the game. They kind of all just stopped and ended when the Hex and Firestorms were in my opinion ruined by Gearbox. So you are seeing on the screen now mainly the Firestorm as it was the one I much preferred out of the two, and to watch it in action alone was amazing. So what Gearbox did to these grenades were, with the Hex variants they reduced damage by 70% and at the same time reduced the duration of the grenade down to 3 seconds. I'm sure it was literally double that prior, maybe even more. And with the Firestorm they also reduced its damage by 70% which in my opinion took all the fun away from using them. The Firestorm went from literally dropping burning balls of fire to dropping falling clouds of cheese balls that just tickle enemies. Okay so moving on and in at number 2 we have the Lyuda sniper rifle. Now the Lyuda was the first weapon I remember besides the King and Queen's Cool that everyone wanted that perfect version of. And when we saw this thing in action you could understand why. The Lyuda which is a world drop no doubt you have seen numerous times farming the game of today and if you don't remember it within its early days you would look upon this thing today and you would more or less disregard it. It is just so so weak. To be honest I still collect them in hope we may see that spark come back to light. So the Lyuda in the early days was the most powerful weapon in the game or one of the most powerful weapons in the game. His capable DPS was scary and the best builds in the game 99% of the time had a Lyuda equipped for maximum boss DPS. But now the Lyuda falls into that category of average to below average snipers due to the nerfs applied by Gearbox which were base damage reduced by 30% and they also took away what they said was a bugged extra bullet from this weapon's shot. This is actually what they said. The Lyuda's functionality is to split the projectiles from 1 to 3 after a certain distance. It was reported that the original projectile was never destroyed in the process of splitting so one projectile actually became 4. Addressing this concern efficiently removed a full shot's worth of damage which auto corrects the base damage of the weapon. Since we increased all sniper rifle critical bonus damage in a previous hotfix, we've reduced some of their critical damage bonus on the Lyuda. And after these nerfs people, the end result is indeed a weapon now nobody uses, which is a shame. Ok so moving on, and finally, and in my opinion the worst nerfed weapon in the game is nothing other than the Flacker. Now for me the Flacker was for sure one of the best weapons in the game. But if we are honest with ourselves, it wasn't even the best shotgun in the game when it got nerfed. People forget about the protuberance, which was an epic or even a rare shotgun, which was much more capable than the Flecker. But because the Flecker was a popular weapon, loads of people used it, and well let's be honest, mounted all with it, Gearbox thought this thing needed a nerf. Now the problem with this nerf to the Flecker and basically everything else today is the fact this one hit way worse than anything else we have seen to a point of just taking the weapon out of the question. This actually if you do a quick search upset a lot of the playing community at the time and it didn't and I remember saying this at the time it didn't help relations between us as the playing community and Gearbox as the developers. Many people lost faith in their methods of adjusting things and I truly think we are still seeing the effects to this day. Many people did indeed lose faith. Many people thought they were purposely taking away the fun and many people even stopped playing. I still have friends who cherished Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2. They loved this game to start but the changes Gearbox made, mainly taking away a lot of the fun, ruined the experience for them. Now in saying this I do think Borderlands 3 right now is the best it's ever been. But back in the early days changes like the one made to the also popular Flacker, that ripple effect is still going on to this day. 
The flak of light now is a weapon I haven't seen anyone touch or mention in months, and if I'm honest, I still think they did indeed make a mistake in the way in which this weapon was nerfed. But that's just my opinion. The actual nerf they applied to the flacker, it consumes a full magazine when fired and the damage was reduced by 33%. And what I actually think happened was, I think they used the flacker as a test to see the community's reaction on them nerfing weapons into the ground. Because we haven't seen any other weapon be nerfed this hard in the past. And let's face it, the flacker right now is probably the least of all weapons you take into a fight. Which is a shame because originally it was an absolute beast. Well hey, it's all just my opinion. And there we have it guys, 5 plus weapons Gearbox took from being incredible items we all enjoyed using, 2 legendaries quickly forgotten about, and now we're just mainly ignored. Now if you guys remember any other weapon you think Gearbox nerfed into the ground, let me know down below in that comments section. And on that note, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.